Father, we thank you, Lord, for again this opportunity to call upon thee. God, I pray, Lord, that you will help us today. God, we need your help. Lord, when I preach on this subject, I know the devil is, is real angry. And God, I know he don't like this at all. But God, I plead the blood of Jesus over this message this morning. May thy will be done. Rebuke the devil from around here. Speak to our hearts. Speak to my heart, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans chapter number 6. The word sin is mentioned many times in the Bible. Sin, sins, and uh, those, uh, you know, all those words are mentioned many times. But the book of Romans mentions sin, uh, the best I can tell, more than any other book in the Bible. And I know in the New Testament, sin is mentioned more in the book of Romans. Why? Because Paul deals with sin. Now, this ain't popular. I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, thinking today that this message is going to be popular, but I'll tell you something. It needs to be preached. We live in a day where sin is running rampant. We live in a day where sinners are abound and, and they're, they're everywhere. We're living in a day of violence. We're living in a day where people have no regard for human life. Now, I'll tell you something. All, these, all this terrorist activity that's going on around the world, let me tell you something. It'd be awfully easy for me to, you know, to, uh, to come against all of that and, say, and, I, and I am saying how evil and, and wicked and mean it is. But when I see those individuals, I know as wicked as they are, they're still sinners that need salvation. Amen? Now, many people, and I've heard them rail against them and say they all ought to be thrown into hell. Well, I'll tell you something. That's probably where they're all going if they don't get born again. But even God will save them, amen, if they'll repent of their sin. But we're living in a day where sin is overlooked, where sin is, is uh, you know, is kind of watered down, where uh, we don't want to call sin what it is. I'll tell you something, friend. There's none righteous, no, not one. Now, let me read before I start preaching, okay? Romans chapter number 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Paul asked a question. But we, we know that we're not living under the law, but we are living under grace. But grace is not a license that we should sin. And just because we can get forgiveness of sin does not mean that we should live in sin and then ask for forgiveness later. And, you know, that's a, that's a popular thing today for people to sin and ask for forgiveness. Well, willful sin, my friend, is far different from, uh, you know, from uh, just a daily sin that comes in their life. When you willfully sin over and over and over, do the same thing over and over, you're, you're calling for the judgment of God on your life. Now, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Can't do it. If you're dead to sin, if you've been saved by the grace of God, you cannot continuously live in sin without the chastisement of God upon you. Know you not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized unto his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto, into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For we uh, have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not, what? Serve sin. You know, sin will get a hold of you and it'll lead you around and, and you can't do nothing about it except you get on your knees before God. You say, I can control my sin not without God's help. You cannot control your sin. And I don't know what it is. I know what my weaknesses are. I know what I have to battle and what I have to fight. But listen, and I don't know what you have to fight and battle, but you try it in, your, the, in, the, in the old flesh and you'll never win. You'll lose that battle every time. That's why we need God. That's why we need, we need uh, the Spirit of God working in our lives. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, death no more death, no more death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but sin, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither ye yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God 
as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness of God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we, what then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Being then made free from sin, ye become the servants of righteousness. Now, friend, Paul talks a whole lot about sin in this. In the, I, I encourage you, go home and read that. Go home and I read it pretty quickly this morning for the sake of time. But go home and read that and read it real slow. Read it verse by verse and stop and ponder. I'll tell you something, sin is ruining our lives. What are we going to do about sin? What do we do about sin? That's the title of the message. Number one, let's ask, let me introduce to you what sin is. Sin is, it means to separate, to, to destroy, or to bring death. That's what sin does. The, there is a Greek word for that, and I'm no Greek expert, but once in a while I come across a word that, uh, you know, that seems important to me, and it's hamartia. That is the Greek word for sin, and it means to be without sharing, to miss the mark, to err, to be mistaken, to miss, wander from the path of uprightness and honor, to go wrong, to wander from the law of God, and it is a violation of God's law. That's what sin is. What is sin? It's sin. Amen. What is it? It means we do wrong. What is sin? It means you go contrary to the Word of God and what the Word of God says. So what are you going to do with sin? What am I going to do with sin in my life? If you're here today and you're lost without God, what are you going to do with sin? What are you going to do? You're servant to it. I know that. God's people can become servants to sin, but a lost man has no choice to be but to be a servant of sin because he knows not God. So real quickly, we see that sin is a big problem. To the lost man, sin is nothing but death. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin is your paycheck. Amen? Death is your paycheck for the sins that you commit, lost man, woman, boy, or girl. If you're lost without God, you are working for a wage and that wage is death. Amen. Only thing you've got to look forward to after this life is death in hell without God. Preacher, that sounds pretty rough. It is. I'm glad, thank God, that I'm not going to hell. Why am I not going to hell? Because one day I bowed and asked Jesus to come into my heart. People don't want to tell other people that they're sinners. That's judging, preacher. I'm preaching to you what the Word of God says. It ain't me that judges. It's the Word of God. If you disagree with that, then you're just disagreeing with God. But the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What is the lost man to do with sin? Well, I'll tell you what he'll do with it. He'll follow it around. Wherever it leads him is where he'll go. Do you think the drunk down in the gutter or the prostitute on the street, do you think that they started out in life thinking that's what I'm going to be when I grow up? Is a drunk, a drug addict, a prostitute. Do you really believe that that's what got them there, sin? What made the drunk a drunkard? He took a drink, took one, took one. Now he's laying down in the gutter because he's a drunkard because he took one. He diddle-daddled in sin just a little bit, and look where it got him. How did the prostitute become a prostitute? She did it one time. They fall in love with sin, my friend. How did the drug addict become a drug addict? Probably started out smoking a joint. That ain't happy for him. And I don't know, I ain't never had one, okay? I ain't never had one. I don't know if it is or not. But I'll tell you what, it scares me to death enough that I ain't never going to try it, amen. Sin is not an instant thing. Sin is a progressive thing. And when the devil gets someone so far in sin that they don't want to get away from their sin, then friend, unless the Holy Spirit of God convict them, they'll die lost without God and without hope. 
the paymaster for sin's wages is none other than the devil himself. And when the devil hands out the wages of sin, friend, you'll find yourself in hell with him. If you're lost, you'll find yourself in hell with the devil. And all those wicked, evil people that you see on the news, that's where you're going to spend eternity. Why would anybody choose to go to hell? You say, preacher, they don't choose to go to hell. They do. Sure as I'm standing here before you today, people have one, two choices in life, accept Jesus as their Savior or reject Jesus as their Savior and go to hell without God. Why in the world would anybody reject that? Because they're blinded by sin. Their life is not clean as that water was when I showed it to you. But it has become darkened with sin, and they're blinded to that thought and that, that process of being dark and sin. Sin's a big problem. Now, to the lost man, who are the lost people? Now, I'll be the first to say to you today, I don't know everybody in here heart. I know mine. I'm sure of me. Amen. I'm sure that I'm going to heaven. And I'm sure most of you, but I don't know. If you are the person or persons in here today that is lost without God, you've got a big problem. You've got a big problem. You're, you're lost, and if you don't get help from God, you have no choice but to go to hell without God. Now, if I ask for hands to be raised today, I would ask you, I would ask you this question, and you don't answer me. How many of you here have intentions of going to hell? There wasn't anybody in their right mind raised their hand. I only met one, one person one time that, that said they wanted to go to hell. I didn't meet one. In all my life in preaching, I've only met one that said they wanted to go to hell. And I asked that question in a, uh, to a man one time in prison. I was only visiting And I asked him, I said, do you want to go to hell? Do you really want to go to hell? Yeah, that's where I want to go. I had nothing to say. I was totally dumbfounded when that, I was not expecting that answer. His reasoning, I don't know what it was. But I talked to him for a little bit and tried to explain to him, and I found out later he was a little off in his head. That's why I said the only, per, the only people that would ever say that would be someone that's not right with that. Not right up here. Listen, my friend, there ain't nobody wants to go to hell. Yet people will leave this church today. Someone will leave this church today lost without God. Unless they get saved today, they'll leave here and no telling when they might drop off into hell. Now, God's people, do you care anything about that? God help us. God help us that we care for lost people, for people that are living in sin. But sometimes what keeps us from caring about those people is the sin in our own life. There's a problem for lost people that have that face sin. The Bible says in Romans chapter number 5, verse number 12, these are the lost people. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, who was that one man? Adam. And death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. There's nobody gets by. You know, there, there's these people that go through life, and they don't, they're really, you can't, put a, you can't put a finger on their life as far as sin goes hardly. <coughs> lost people, lost men and women that have stayed faithful to each other for 35 or 40 years. They've raised their family. They've raised their family with their children with character. They've raised their family good morally people. And they've done all of these things right. And yet, without Jesus in their heart, they're just as lost as the, as the, the man on the street, the gutter man in the street. Just as lost. How can that be? Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says, for all have sinned. There's nobody going to get by. You're not going to get by because you're a member of Gables Creek Baptist Church. You're not going to heaven just because you're a church member. You'll go to heaven because you accept Jesus as your Savior. Lost people today, and listen, I, it, it, I have to preach. Listen, I have to preach like everybody in the building is a lost person, and I know better, but I have to preach that way to let you understand that lost people are going to hell without God. Amen. Lord, help us. 
Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It says, there is none righteous, no, not one. If you have not accepted Christ as your Savior today, you are lost. You are in sin, and sin has a hold on you, and sin one day will pay up. Sad thing about it is you sit here listening to me today telling you that you're lost without God and you'll go to hell and you'll, you'll forever relive that very, this very message that this preacher preached to you, warning you of, of hell without hope. You don't have to be lost, though. That's the good thing. You don't have to go to hell. Nobody in this building has to go to hell. Nobody. Preacher, I don't want to go to hell. What do I do? Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Acts 16, 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and what? Thou shalt be saved. Amen. Believe and be saved and go to heaven. What do I have to do, preacher? Well, first of all, you've got to know you're lost. That's the first step is knowing that you're lost. If you don't know you're lost, you'll never get saved. You'll know you're lost because the Spirit of God on the inside, the convicting Spirit of God will send conviction to you and tell you and show you that you need to go to hell, that you need to get saved to go to heaven. When I got saved, I was a little boy, don't remember a whole lot, but I remember that I knew something that I needed in my life and I needed to be saved. And without a horrible amount of sin that I had to confess up, I went before the Lord and said, Lord, will you save me? And guess what? He saved me. Amen. Said, so I have to confess my sins, every one of them. You just confess that you're a sinner and ask Jesus to save you. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses from all sin. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. The Bible is full of salvation. The Bible is full of ways for people to go to heaven. But the bottom line is this. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved or die without him and go to hell. Heaven or hell, friend. Heaven or hell. Lost man, woman, boy, or girl. Where are you going to spend eternity? And is it worth it? Is your life of sin worth going to hell over? You'll live if you live to be 100 years old. A lot of us in here are over halfway there. Some of you are a quarter way there. Some of you just getting started. But even if you live to be 100 years old, that's a short, brief period, vapor of time to live and live in the pleasure of sin and then spend all eternity in hell. Do you believe in hell? Yeah, I do. Do I believe that hell is a literal place of burning fire forever? Yes, I do. Preacher, you're scaring me. If I could scare you enough to get you to come to God, I'd do it. But I can't do anything but preach to you the Word of God. And the Word of God tells me that there is a literal hell that people are going to. Who's going there, preacher? The lost man. The lost man that dies in his sin. And I could go over numerous stories of people that I've heard of that have died in their sin, died lost without God in their screams as they were, as they were as their feet were, were, were going into hell and as they were dying and they were saying, somebody please put out the fire. And that has been recorded. The people have, have acted. Now they drug you up and you don't know what people's thinking when they die. I've also had stories and seen it in my own life where people lay and they're ready to meet the Lord and on their way to heaven and they smile with a big smile and raise their hand toward heaven and it ain't long till they've checked out to be with the Lord forever. Friend, I'd rather die like that is die slipping off into hell. The rich man, the Bible says about the rich man that in hell he lift up his eyes. Who was the rich man? He was the lost man. Makes no difference that he was rich or poor. He was a lost man. And in hell he lift up his eyes. But Lazarus, what happened to him? Next, next time you see Lazarus, he's seen in the bosom of the angels coming escorted him into Abraham's bosom. Which will you choose today? You're here lost without God. you got a problem with sin. And unless you deal with that problem of sin, friend, the only hope for you, the only thing you've got to look forward to is hell. And this is the only heaven on this earth that you'll ever experience. Now then, what will you do about sin? 
Now, to the saved person, which I'm not going to neglect to preach to you too and myself, to the saved person, there is a problem with sin. To you and I, sin is still a problem. Now, if you figured out how that sin's not a problem in your life, will you please come and explain to me how that you get by without sinning? Just tell me somebody. You know the old story, the, I've told it, I'll tell it again, just maybe you've not heard it or maybe it just renew in your mind. But there's this man, he gets up and he begins to pray. And he's praying and he goes, Father, I thank you that this day that I have not sinned, I thank you that this day that I've not committed any kind of sin, I've, I've not lied to no one, I've not made fun of anyone, I've not blew my horn at anyone driving down the highway, and God, up to this point today, I'm living sinless. I don't know if I can make it the rest of the day, but to right now, I'm living sinless. And then he says, Lord, I've got to get out of the bed in a minute. And I've got to go to work. Lord, help me to live without sin. Now that's a little funny, but that's about as far as you make it during the day. It's when you wake up in the morning for the first few minutes. But then here comes the devil. And the devil begins to assault your mind. And the devil begins to run things through your mind. And you're in a constant battle with sin all the day of your life. You're in a, hey, the only way you'll not sin is if you not yield to that temptation. Temptation in itself is not a sin. Temptation, we're all tempted. Christ was tempted yet without sin. We all face temptation every day. But temptation becomes a sin when we yield to that temptation. Now, if I was tempted to be a drunkard, which I'm not, but if I was tempted to be a drunkard and, and, and uh, that someone had set a bottle, of, a bottle of liquor down here for me to go by and see that every day, and I was tempted. You know what? Changes are good. They would happen after a while. I'd pick that bottle of liquor up and I'd take me a drink. You stay away from things that are no that you're tempted by. You stay away from them. Don't do that. <clears throat> Save people. We got a problem with sin. That's what's ruining a lot of churches. The Bible says this. 1 John 1, 8, if we, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And there's people that believe. There's people that believe with all their heart as well as I believe in salvation by grace. They believe in salvation by works. And the only way that they can get to heaven is to live without sin. Friend, they're, they're, they'll never make it. They'll never make it. Because there's none that is without sin. The Bible says in Psalms 51, 2, Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from sin. There is a way to be cleansed from sin. It takes the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you saw the illustration down here, the darkness comes from sin, but the, the, but the light and the, and the forgiveness comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. And the moment that that is, comes into our life, friend, we're free of sin. Amen. So you know the best thing that I can do is get up and start out and try to do my best. Resist temptation. And if I fail any time during that day, rather than have that little drop of sin in me that just very little sin in me and wait until the end of the day to confess that before God, you know what the best thing for me to do is? Right then when I sin, Lord, forgive me because I know when I did it. Hey, man, you know when you done it. When you sin, there's no doubt in your mind that you done wrong. And the best thing you can do right then is say, Lord, forgive me for my sin. You know what will happen? The next thing that will happen, you'll do it again. You won't confess it. You'll do something else. And you're, by the end of the day, your life is going to be like that dark water I showed you here. That's misery. That's misery. What does sin do in the Christian life? It separates us. Brother Mac, if I get out into sin and try to get around you as good living as you are and I get around you, my fellowship's broken with you. Brother Frank, anybody else in here? If, I'm, if I get, as a preacher, if I get out into sin, I get around you and I try to fellowship, can't do it. I've done that. It was horrible. It is horrible trying to live that life. I, I was trying to live one foot, one foot in the world 
and one fed in sin, and I didn't have, I wasn't having fun with nobody. When I was when I was doing sinful things, and the Lord was saying, you know, you oughtn't be doing it. When I tried to get around God's people, I felt convicted, couldn't have no fellowship with them. I'm telling you, friend, to the saved person, sin is no fun. The Bible, well, what does the Bible say? There's pleasure in sin, preacher. Yeah, it says that, but what else does that verse say? It's only for a season. Oh, you might get out and enjoy yourself for a little while in sin. You might enjoy the pleasures of sin, but like the prodigal son, you're going to soon run out and hit the bottom, and the only place you've got to go then is up. Amen. The only place you've got to do, the only thing you've got left to do is go back to the Father. What are you going to do with sin? Sin keeps us from God. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. The psalmist David said, my sin is ever before me. He's talking about that sin with Bathsheba. Even though, even though he had, forgiven, had gotten forgiveness for that, he remembered it all the days of his life. And I'll tell you, friend, if you sin as a child of God, the devil will remind you. And he will bring it back. And it will ever be before you. What do you do about it? You go on for God. You go on for God. Sin keeps us from God. Psalms chapter, uh, in, in Psalms chapter 18, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Isaiah 59, 2, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid the face from you that He will not hear. Sin separates us from God. It separates us from the fellowship of one another, and it separates us from God. Now, does that mean that if I die with sin in my heart that I'm going to hell? No, it doesn't. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses from all sin. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. God gives eternal life. I'm saved. But if I die with sin in my life, then, friend, I'm going to face God with nothing. I face the Lord, I stand at the judgment seat of Christ with nothing. All my rewards will be, will be taken away and I will be saved yet though as by fire. Christian, there's a problem with sin. There's a problem with sin. We must guard sin from sin. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse number 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. When sin and the temptation of sin comes in your life, you know the first thing to do, look for the escape route. Amen? Look for the door. How do you get out of it? And the devil, he's sneaky. He's sneaky. You'll be doing, doing just fine, and he'll all of a sudden, he'll come at you with something you've never thought of before. He'll throw some thought in your mind that you had never thought of before. Why? Because the devil is all he is, is the devil. I hate him. I, you know, I've heard many people say that they'd like to be the first one to boot him off into hell. I'm not going to have that opportunity, but I'll tell you something. I'll be there to see it happen. Amen? And he's going there. Amen? I know who's going to win this battle. It's going to be the Lord Jesus Christ. And, he, and, he, and, and eventually, the devil's going to go to hell and be there for all eternity where... He is his prepared place. But he's sneaky. And he'll come at you in all different manner of ways. Listen, young people, the devil will get you dilly-dallying around in sin. And then you know what he'll do? He'll show you how pleasurable that is. And you'll like that for a little while. But if you're a child of God, it ain't going to last long. I promise you, it ain't going to last long. And then you're going to be miserable. And you'll either continue in sin... And, and face the chastisement of God, or you'll get right with God and enjoy a Christian life. Amen. I'm a happy person. Amen. I'm saved by God's grace, and my life is not at all boring. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I hardly ever am I bored. I can sit on the side of a tree with a gun in my hand and not do one thing but look around, and I'm not at all bored. Amen. I'm excited. Waiting for that monster to walk out so I can get all nervous and drop my gun or something, you know. 
Listen, Christian life is a happy life. Amen. Everybody smile at me. Preacher, I ain't got no reason to smile. Hey, if you're not going to hell, you got a reason to smile. You, listen, Christian people should be the happiest people on earth. Oh, lots of jokes you tell once in a while. Well, I'm sorry. Amen. Get over it. Without a sense of humor, without a little bit of humor along the way, why would any sinner want to be saved? Amen. If I walk around with a dull look on my face, oh, so, 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 I'm so glad I'm saved. I'm so full of misery. I'm, I mean, I'm so full of salvation. Oh, boy, I'm saved. <laughs> who, who wants that? <laughs> but listen, if I walk around, and listen, I have bad days. I have bad days sometimes. Things don't always go right. But I try my best not to let the devil know it. Amen. Even though he may be causing a lot of it, I try not to let him know he's getting to me. Amen. It don't hurt you to smile. It don't hurt you to have a good time. Believers ought to be happy. Listen, we're going to heaven when we leave this world. We're not going to hell. But sin is a problem to us because it robs us of our joy. It robs us of our happiness. It robs us of our fellowship with God. It robs us with our fellowship. Listen, the pleasure of sin for a season is just not worth your time or effort. Give it up. Amen. Give it up. Sin will ruin your Christian life. It will ruin your testimony. It will ruin your family. And sin will ruin a church. What are you going to do about sin? What am I going to do about sin? 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the Word of God this morning. God, I thank you for your help. I pray right now, God, that you bless the altar call. God, I pray that the... The sinners that are here, the lost people that are here today, I pray, God, you'd send conviction to them that this day they'd come to you before it's too late. And, Lord, if there's someone here living, Lord, in a, in a way, God, that's contrary to thy will, and, Lord, living in sin, I pray, God, that you'd touch them, Lord, with a spirit of conviction. They'll get right with you today. And, Lord, junk that sin because it ain't worth it. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. While everyone stands, every head bowed, no one looking around. Now, I'll preach to you exactly what the Lord laid on my heart. I'll make no apologies for anything I said. Amen. It all comes from the Word of God. And it's tough. It's tough on me when I study it, and I know it's tough to hear. But if you're here today and you're lost without God, you're in the best company you can ever be in right here at the house of God today. But you're headed to hell if you don't get saved. And if you wait till it's too late, it's too late. There is nothing in this life worth going to hell over and spending eternity there. And I wonder, I'm going to ask you this question. Now, I'm not going to keep this long, but I want to ask you this question. If you're here and you don't know God, you're lost. Would you slip up your hand and let us continue to continue to pray for you? God bless you. Is there another? Raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm lost. God bless you. Some of you Christian people that can pray and get a prayer through, come up here and begin to pray. Will you please, right now, please come.